Sarcoidosis is a form of inflammation, or rather it's a condition which is caused by a particular type of inflammation where white blood cells, which are the immune cells of our body, um, are gathered together uh, and form these large balls, which we call granuloma. Essentially, something signals the white blood cells to send out this message, and all of a sudden you have this aggregate of white blood cells, which will infiltrate any potential tissue. Um, that accounts for the variability of this particular condition. Um, very often it affects the lungs, so you have these balls, if you will, of inflammation in the lung tissue, and people will have shortness of breath, cough, etc. It's many different things. It can be a skin rash, it can be joint inflammation, it can be vision changes. Um, and it's not all the same in any given individual. No one really knows what the cause of sarcoidosis is. What you can say is that your body's immune system has been turned on by something and in a sense forgets to turn itself off. What I can tell you is that it's not an infection in the traditional sense of the word. So it's not that like you can give sarcoid to anyone else. It's not a malignancy. It's not a cancer that spreads in that manner. Um, but it's your body's reaction to something that they've probably been exposed to. So the, the ultimate trigger may vary from individual to individual, but the common pathway is this granuloma. So sarcoidosis can affect anybody at any time, any race, any sex. In the United States, it is more common in African Americans. It is almost also more common in women. Um, but there's a huge cohort of patients in Scandinavia. There's a huge cohort of uh, patients in Japan. Um, so um, anybody can get it. Treatment options uh, for sarcoidosis uh, are many. Um, I think the first question is to ask, does this patient even need to be treated? Or can the patient just need to be monitored? And that's really a very important question because not most patients probably don't even need to be treated. Uh, sometimes we'll see just a little swollen lymph node on a chest x-ray, we biopsy if it's there, and that's it. Never bothered anybody and won't bother anyone again. You want to match the aggressiveness to the treatment to the risks that's involved with the disease. So someone with a skin rash, we sometimes just put topical steroids on. If it's a more diffuse rash, we'll use mild medications uh, more systemically um, that we might use for rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, one you know, something called Plaquenil or hydroxychloroquine. Um, but if someone needs to need rapid treatment, say someone with heart disease or someone who really can't walk 10 steps without uh, getting shortness of breath because of lung involvement, we usually start with steroids, um, which is you know, pretty commonplace with all of our diseases in rheumatology. We use the traditional stuff that we use for rheumatoid arthritis like methotrexate commonly, but the real excitement right now um, is in a class of medications known as JAK inhibitors, which uh, again, already used for rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, psoriasis, even eczema. My um, uh, mission over the past 15 to 20 years was to try to inject a rheumatologic philosophy to the treatment of sarcoid. And that is to use many of the medicines, repurpose them uh, that we uh, used for other conditions in rheumatology uh, and enable people to get better control of their disease without the use of steroids. And it, it's, it's really been so gratifying to see these changes occur.